Hello, hello. First message at 40, the Holy Ghost. Now this one is a spiritual teacher now. And it's going to take a lot of people by surprise because in the days that we're living in, some people have no idea of what the Holy Ghost is slash Holy Spirit. So what is the Holy Ghost? Do you have it? Because see, everybody who think they have it, don't have it. This is 2023, where so much has changed. I want to say maybe 15 years ago, I began to see a turn of understanding, of turn a turn in how people perceive the scriptures, where many adults were saying, it don't take all of that. Now, I'm 40, 40. This had to be when, maybe when I was a teenager, I would hear adults saying, you don't have to tarry anymore. Well, what is tarrying? Let me just explain it. Tarrying was when people would come around the altar, which was considered a holy milestone, a holy place, and they would call on the name of Jesus consistently call Jesus, call Jesus, call Jesus. But people begin to say, you don't do, you don't have to do that anymore. It don't take all of that. All you need to do is recite a sinner's prayer, which is what someone else is telling you to do, what someone else is telling you to say, according to their understanding, and you're all set. Just say a few words that takes you less than a minute and you're done. You got it. Nonetheless, I'm not here to Try to debunk that if that's where you are or if that's how you say you got it. But I will say this. I want everybody to look around right now. It's a big difference between the way church was now and the way it was back then. You see, there was a time when I was in elementary, middle school, and a little bit in high school because that's when it began to fade away. People would come to the house of the Lord, come to the house of God with uh, medical issues, cancer, AIDS, high blood pressure, uh, broken ligaments, broken marriages. I mean, all manner of, of issues, okay? And they will go to the altar, get prayed over, okay, by members of the presbytery. Sometimes it will be members, lay members in the church that would lay hands and, and pray for you. And there was a change that happened. I remember people coming back to church with paperwork stating that they are healed now, that they did have cancer, but now they're coming back with paperwork saying that the cancer is gone. People who had AIDS, who had proof that they had it, and they would come back to the house of God with paperwork from the doctor saying that it was gone. I'm not saying that it's not happening these days, but baby, not from the way that I used to see it happening. It's, it's too many games being played these days. It's too much ego going on. Too many people are so hungry for money, so hungry to be comfortable in life, so hungry to have luxury that they're not really paying much attention to the needs of God, the needs of the kingdom and what the people need. What do God need you to do in this earth? What is he requiring of us? And do we care anymore? Or is it just about the BBLs? Is it, is it about us having a bigger butt so that we can go into the house of the Lord and show people how we're shaped? Is it is it about people saying that, that our boobs are standing up, that our face is perfect, that we have all this money and we can go buy a Porsche and that, oh yeah, God is blessing me. Look at all of these things that I have. But since when? Was those things glorified? Since when did, did luxury and money, cars, houses, and, and showing off, putting on for the city, when was that the Holy Ghost? When was that proof that God was blessing you? Because you have things. What does that have to do with the promises of God? I'm not talking about the promises of blessings because see, so many people associate blessings with having a lot of money in the bank, with having all these toys to play with. I'm not talking about that because if you work hard enough, if you know how to uh, move your money, how to invest your money, you can go buy a car, houses, uh, a butt job and all this kind of stuff that the world has to offer you. 
You just have to work hard because if that were not so, why would people who don't believe in God, why are atheists and all these other people able to uh, accomplish all these things and they don't, they, they don't even care to mention God? Come on, people. We, we've lost sight. I started off by saying, what is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Spirit. And do you have it? Do you have it? If you are serious about understanding this and wanting to know more, do you really want God? Do you really want Yahweh? Do you really want his spirit that will take over your mind? And I'm not talking about as far as being a robot, but I'm talking about when you get to a place where you're like, God, I want you to, to guide my life, to guide my heart, guide the way that I think, the way that I process things, guide the way that I treat people, guide the way that I, that I act behind closed doors, the way that I treat my spouse, the way that I handle my children, the way that I am on my job, when I am away from my parents, away from the people who love me. How do I act? Am I a person of integrity? This is the love of Holy Spirit that I'm talking about. Do you have it or not? And if you're interested in having it, I want you to DM me. Because this is this is this is something that has to be taught. We can hop on a Zoom or, or something. If you really want to know, I need you to DM me or even jump in the comments and let me know so that this can be discussed, so this can be taught, questions can be asked. Because everybody who think they have the Holy Spirit don't have it, baby. I am human just like you are human. But as humans, there is a spirit, many spirits that are going out into the world. And some people are confused, baby, as to what the spirit of God is. Because there are many gods going out into the world. The God of luxury, the God of money, mammon, the God of control, manipulation, the God of beauty, the God of manipulation. It's many gods. But what God are you submitted to? Hallelujah. What God are you submitted to today? Are you under the spirit of pride? Are you under the spirit of lust? What is the Holy Ghost? And do you have it? <laughs> I know somebody's going to consider this to be old fashioned, traditional. But for some people, some people really want to know. Some people really want God. And they're going back and forth to different churches trying to find out where they fit in because they are looking for God and they can't find it. And then you have people saying, well, if you want to get something out of the service, you got to put something in. No, no, because when people are coming in fresh and they have no knowledge of God, they have to be taught. They have to be welcomed. They have to sense that spirit. And there is a difference between the spirit of evil and the spirit of holiness. There's a difference. People can feel it. This is one reason why some people are back and forth. Because the spirit of God is not there. But this is about what is the Holy Ghost and do you have it? Because everyone who think they have it don't have it. I want you to think about some things. Are you dealing with the spirit of anger, the spirit of lust continuously? How do you act day to day? You see, we're good at throwing off the blame game. Well, he made me do this. If you didn't disrespect me, I wouldn't act like this. But where is the spirit of temperance, self-control? Now, that is a fruit of the spirit. And these things come when you have the Holy Spirit in your life. When you enter a mindset where you say, you know what? I want God. I want the spirit of God in my life so bad that I am willing to walk away and be done with the things that bring me pleasure. Because some things that bring pleasure are evil. Some things that bring pleasure are separating us from God. And I'm not saying that we won't error because once again, we are human beings that need God. Yes, we will error. But where is your heart turned towards? Uh, where's your mind? When you get ready to make different decisions, are you counting the cost? Are you considering what the spirit of God has to say about it? Are you considering uh, how God feels about it? Is this something that you should be associated with and dealing with? 
Do we consider that? Or are we so concerned with, it makes me feel good. It's going to put money in my pocket. I don't care who it hurts. As long as I get me, me. I don't want to go back to being poor. I don't want to go back to being uh, controlled. So I am willing to do A, B, and C so that my will can be done. Not the will of the Father. What is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Spirit. Do you have it? Because everyone who believes they have it, don't have it. If you are interested in knowing more about the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, please DM me. This is something that has to be taught, something that has to be discussed. There are many opinions about this, but according to the scriptures and according to the insight that God gives, the Holy Spirit is not something that makes you just, you know, do all of the movements and is speaking to is speaking to uh, speaking another tongue and and you know the gyrating. No, no, no. According to the scriptures, that is not what it is. The Holy Spirit is not something that makes you do anything. It is not something that controls you. It's really a decision. It's a decision that you have to make, an understanding that you have to come under, and it is a way of life that you live according to your understanding of God and according to what he wants to pour into you. Living as Christ did, holy, breaking away, consulting God for any and everything. We think we know it all. According to what we've seen, our doctrines, our traditions, what mama told us, what grandma and granddaddy told us, what daddy said. Th this is how we have been introduced to God. But how many people are willing to do what Jesus, the Messiah, did? Where you constantly break away and you constantly talk and converse with God. Not just uh, reciting a prayer that you saw in a book. Not just reciting a prayer that some minister told you to recite. But when you pull away and you break away and you converse with God. God, which means you talk and then you allow him to talk back to you and you live your life based on that. The Holy Ghost. Do you have it? When you have the Holy Ghost, you won't have too many friends because it causes for a separate lifestyle. You won't have to, you won't have to cut anyone off. People will willingly leave your life when you live when you live according to the plan that God has for you. People will just naturally fall away. Because in these days and times, not that it wasn't bad when I was a kid, but in these days and times, 2023, the world has gone mad and is so far left. <laughs> Is so far left that it's so easy to spot out when someone is living a separated life for God. Because you have ministers and people that are in the church, people that go to church according to tradition, people that go to go to mosque, and all these people who claim to, to be spiritual. But they are so tied up in the world. It's like it's no difference. How do I, how can I find God? Like through the people of God, we are supposed to be a light that is set on the hill that is so bright that people can see and say, I can just go here. I can go there. I can go and talk to that person and I can get an understanding. That person can point me towards God. That person can help me get to the father. But lights have been blown out. The light has been thrown into the water. The light has been buried somewhere because so many people want to be liked. So many people want to be accepted. So many people think that you have to be like the world and, and do all of these things to be cool in order to draw people. But no, you are drawing people based on worldly things that you're putting out. You're not drawing them according to a light. Because if that were so, People wouldn't be so quick to run away and be scattered if they were drawn to the light of God. There's a quote that says everything that's glitter isn't gold. Everything that's shining isn't the real deal. And this is the truth. This is why you can see certain people and say, oh, yeah, I want to go over there and, and find God. 
But when you go there, you're like, nah, yeah, th that looked just like what I just love. That looked like what I'm trying to run away from. And please understand what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to go and look to a person to find God. I am saying that this, this is what teaching is about. Uh, Christianity, if you will, or kingdom, kingdom, kingdom mindsets. The people of God are supposed to be by nature, the nature of Christ, a light that will draw people to God, the Holy Father. But when you live in such a way where you look like Satan, the adversary, Antichrist, you are you cannot draw people to the kingdom. You are drawing people to Antichrist because it's either one or the other. We talk about the gray zone and the gray zone may exist in certain arenas of life, but the gray zone does not exist with God. Either you have the Holy Spirit or you don't. Talk about being saved and all that. That's a whole nother ball game. Zoom. I don't have enough time to try to teach that here. This is about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of God. And for those of you who like to talk about energy and vibes. OK, if you want to deal with energy and vibes, you know, when you are around an atmosphere where you begin to feel dirty or you feel like, oh, yeah. This person, they have an attitude. I can just feel anger on them because the, the atmosphere is, is changed. The energy is just dirty. It makes you cringe to the point to where you want to get away from that person. Get out of that atmosphere. Okay, just like you can sense that without someone telling you that they are angry, without someone telling you that they have a nasty attitude, without someone telling you that they are perverse uh, and they are um, have that uh, spirit of manipulation on them without them even telling you, you can sense it. Okay. By that same token, you can also sense when you are in an atmosphere of cleanliness, when you are in an atmosphere of holiness, an atmosphere of, uh, of mothership, of fatherhood, of nurturing. It's a difference. And that difference comes along with having the Holy Spirit. Jesus, the Christ, had the Holy Spirit. The scriptures teach us that wherever he went, there was a crowd following him. Why were they following him? Why was the church being added to daily? Because there was a difference in the way that he walked. There was a difference in the way that the apostles walked, the way that they lived. They weren't concerned about how they looked. They weren't concerned about being sexy and handsome for the ladies. They weren't concerned with manipulating people. They had the concern of Christ, the concern of the, of the kingdom, people being delivered from all manner of diseases, sicknesses and spirits that they had an urge and an urgency for God like Christ did. But do we these days, do we care about people being lost? Do we care about people committing suicide? Do we care about people being overtaken by demons? Do we care about marriages being broken? Do we care about people not having the Holy Ghost? Or are we too concerned about our families? Concerned about getting me, me. Concerned about following the dream, following the vision. I'm trying to get this money. I'm trying to have generational wealth. But one day you're going to be gone back to the father. And what will it matter that you made a million dollars once you make it to judgment day? What will it matter that you slept with over a hundred women, over a hundred men? What will it matter on judgment day when we have to get back to God and we have to give an account to the years that we spent on this earth and what we did while we were here? What will it matter? Life is so beautiful. I'm the first one to tell you. I love life. I love adventure. I love to travel. I love to laugh. I like to dance. I like to enjoy my family and friends. I love it. But at the core of me, it's kingdom. Yeah, I've made mistakes. Yes, I've made bad decisions. But at the core of me, it's God. I want you. I want you to be satisfied. I want to live my life in a way to where people will be pointed back to God, not to me, not to look at me and say, oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, you're so pretty. I want to be just like you. No, it's not about that. It's about me pointing people back to God. This is why the content is where it is. is, what is where it is. I give you the spiritual, I give you personal development, I give you pro professionalism, coaching, all of this. If you look at the core of it, it's still pointing you back to God. Character. Oh, man. 
this thing can go deep. You guys have a good day. If you want to know more about what the Holy Spirit is, what it is designed to do, the changes that it can make in your life, uh, the transformation that will come over you, the positive impact that it will have on your life, your family, and the world at large, DM me so that we can hook up something, a Zoom of, or, or whatever. We can talk about this thing and you can come under, or really overstand what God is, is, is requiring, um, the benefit, the benefit of having the Holy Spirit in your life is not good enough just to say, oh, I know God. I have God in my heart. I'm a good person. The Holy Spirit will come in like a hurricane and give you way more benefits to that of just, oh, I know God. He's good to me. He's blessing me. Baby, there is another level. Once you get the Holy Spirit, you will really see who God is and what he can do. And it's not all, it will not all be positive. It's, neg it's negative things that occur when you get the Holy Spirit. Because now you are a threat to the kingdom of hell, the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of evil. Now you are a threat. So now you will be attacked left and right. <laughs> by those whom you love the most, by those whom you least expected because you are on a path to usher other people into the kingdom of God, which puts a mark on your forehead to the devil himself in everything and anything that works for the enemy or the spirit of evil. You guys have a good day. Thank you to all of you. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you to all of you who wish me a happy birthday. I really appreciate it. And I'm so glad to still be here on earth. All right. And I'm going to do my best to make God proud. And if I can be of any assistance to you, please shoot me a DM. I offer several services. You can go to my website and see that. It's links all over my page on several of the, the posts. There are links everywhere. So if you need assistance with anything, personal development, professionalism, spiritual wellness, DM me so that we can talk about it and you can share your feedback. That's what it's all about. Don't come with the mind of, I better not say this. I could be wrong. No, say what you know, say what you've learned and what you believe. This is how we overcome. And this is how we learn by conversing together and coming to an understanding um, so that we can better serve God. That's what it's about. And the people around us. You guys have a good day. Until next time.